Mites are small arachnids, they span two large orders of arachnids, the Acariforms and the Parasitiforms, which were historically grouped together. However, most recent genetic analyses do not recover the two as each other's closest relative within Arachnida, rendering the group non-monophyletic. The mite fossil record is sparse, due to their small size and low preservation potential. Seroptes mites are responsible for causing seroptic mange in various animals, leading to economic losses among farmers of cattle, sheep and goats. The disease is highly infectious, and is transmitted via fence posts and other structures that livestock use when scratching themselves. The mites have mouthparts which do not pierce the skin, but are adapted to feeding on the surface, where the mites abrade the stratum corneum. Mites eat a wide variety of material including living and dead plant and fungal material, lichens and carrion. Some are predatory, though no orobatid mites are parasitic. Mites are among the most diverse and successful of all invertebrate groups. They have exploited a wide array of habitats, and because of their small size go largely unnoticed. They feed on animals, plants and fungi and some are parasites of plants and animals. Some 48,200 species of mites have been described, but there may be a million or more species as yet undescribed. Demodex mites are a natural part of the human skin microbiome. They are found on the skin of virtually all adult humans, although their populations tend to increase with age. These mites are primarily active during the night, when they emerge from hair follicles to move and mate on the skin's surface. While they are generally considered harmless, a high density of demodex mites has been associated with certain skin conditions such as rosacea and blepharitis. However, the nature of this association is still a topic of ongoing research. Being unable to fly, mites need some other means of dispersal. On a small scale, Walking is used to access other suitable locations in the immediate vicinity. Some species mount to a high point and adopt a dispersal posture and get carried away by the wind, while others waft a thread of silk aloft to balloon to a new position. Parasitic mites use their hosts to disperse, and spread from host to host by direct contact. The red velvet mite bright red color results from carotenoids, warning predators about the toxicity of the mite. Almost nothing is known about the toxic substances used, but they are probably contained within the integument. While adults live freely and are often found wandering about, searching for small animals and insect eggs for food, the larvae try to find a host to attach themselves to, often an insect like a grasshopper or fly, but also arachnids like harvest men or spiders. At this stage they appear as red globules on their hosts, sucking body liquid without severely harming the host. These larvae then develop into free-living nymphs that resemble adults. Well-preserved fossils have been found in the 400-million year old Rhiney Churts of Scotland. These fossils look surprisingly modern, indicating that their basic body shape developed very early on, and, at least in some taxa, has changed little since that time. Although superficially similar to and often misidentified as spiders, the apiliones are a distinct order that is not closely related to spiders. They can be easily distinguished from long-legged spiders by their fused body regions and single pair of eyes in the middle of the cephalothorax. They also have no silk glands and therefore do not build webs. Autotomy is the voluntary amputation of an appendage, and is employed to escape when restrained by a predator. Some individuals, more specifically sclerosomated harvest men, commonly use this strategy in response to being captured. This strategy can be costly because harvest men do not regenerate their legs, and leg loss reduces locomotion, speed, climbing ability, sensory perception, 
food detection, and territoriality. Autotomized legs provide a further defense from predators because they can twitch for 60 seconds to an hour after detachment. Smooth Harvestman is chestnut brown, with a small, smooth, and very long round or oval body and thin black legs, as well as having no separation between the head and the abdomen. The Harvestman's legs can be self-amputated if it is in danger of predation, but they do not regenerate. Although the Harvestman has no fangs, poison glands, or silk glands, it can protect itself with the scent glands on the front of its body. The scent glands produce a secretion that repels predators. The species has three different types of nephrocytes. Numerous large nephrocytes occur in clusters between the muscles in the anterior region of the body. Most of their time is spent stationary, but daddy longlegs have also been observed walking and leg palpating, making tapping movements with their sensory legs, as well as drinking, feeding, and grooming. As is typical of Apillionids, the species is nocturnal, observed to exhibit 90% of their total activity at night. Adults of both sexes have been observed to walk more from nightfall to midnight than during the day, and males have been observed to walk for longer in the early morning, possibly to attempt to find females to mate with. They also exhibit leg palpating only at night, with adult females and nymphs exhibiting more leg palpating than males, possibly as a foraging strategy. As an arachnid species, common harvest men have four pairs of legs. Three of these pairs are for movement, but the longest, second pair is antennae shaped and used as a sensory appendage to feel their surroundings. Their tarsus, the segment of their legs furthest from their body, have numerous pseudo-segments called tarsomeres that make them prehensile, enabling it to use them in climbing, such as by curling them around twigs and male-to-male -male combat. It is a generalist predator and scavenger that feeds on soft-bodied animals found in crops. Despite the common name sun spiders or camel spiders, these arachnids are neither true scorpions, nor true spiders. Most species live in dry climates and feed opportunistically on ground-dwelling arthropods and other small animals. These fast-moving animals have the largest jaw size to body ratio of any animal. They are not venomous, but have a remarkably powerful bite. Often hunting at night, they have poor eyesight and navigate mostly by use of a pair of pedipalps. They are solitary creatures, coming together only to mate, the male using his pedipalps to transfer seminal fluid to the female, which buries between 50 and 200 eggs in the ground. The female stays with the young until they are mature enough to hunt and defend themselves, feeding and caring for them. The Salifugi are the subject of many legends and exaggerations about their size, speed, behavior, appetite and lethality. They are not especially large, the biggest camel spider having a leg span around 12 cm they are fast on land compared to other invertebrates, with their top speed estimated to be 16 km per hour, close to half as fast as the fastest human sprinter. Because of their unfamiliar spider-like appearance and rapid movements, Salifugi have startled or even frightened many people. Claims that they aggressively chase people are also untrue, as they are merely trying to stay in the shadow provided by the human in the deserts. Ticks are parasitic arachnids that are part of the mite superorder Parasitiformes. Adult ticks are approximately 3 to 5 mm in length depending on age, sex, species, and fullness. They are external parasites, living by feeding on the blood of vertebrates. The timing of the origin of ticks is uncertain, though the oldest known tick fossils are from the Cretaceous period, around 100 million years old. 
They are widely distributed around the world, especially in warm, humid climates. Ticks are implicated in the transmission of a number of infections caused by pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, and protozoa, more specifically Lyme disease. A tick can harbor more than one type of pathogen, making diagnosis more difficult. Not all ticks in an infective area are infected with transmittable pathogens, and both attachment of the tick and a long feeding session are necessary for diseases to be transmitted. Consequently, tick bites often do not lead to infection, especially if the ticks are removed within 36 hours. Castor bean tick has a three-host life cycle, which usually takes two to three years to complete, although it can take from one to six years in extreme cases. Adults feed on large mammals such as cattle, dogs, deer, humans and horses for six, 13 days, before dropping off. An engorged female lays several thousand eggs and subsequently dies. The larvae that hatch do not actively seek a host, and usually feed on insectivores, although they may also find other small mammals. They feed for three to five days before dropping off and molting. The resulting nymphs then ascend grasses or twigs to seek their next host, but must return to the moist microclimate at the soil surface if they become dehydrated. Pseudoscorpions are generally beneficial to humans since they prey on clothes moth larvae, carpet beetle larvae and mites. They are tiny, and are rarely noticed due to their small size, despite being common in many environments. When people do see pseudoscorpions, especially indoors, they are often mistaken for ticks or small spiders. Pseudoscorpions often carry out pheresis, a form of commensalism in which one organism uses another for the purpose of transport. Scorpions are predatory arachnids of the order scorpions. They have eight legs, and are easily recognized by a pair of grasping pincers and a narrow, segmented tail, often carried in a characteristic forward curve over the back and always ending with a stinger. The evolutionary history of scorpions goes back 435 million years. Paleophanus was virtually identical to modern scorpions. These animals did not have eyes and therefore they were blind. It seems to have been terrestrial. Whether the early scorpions were marine or terrestrial has been debated, though they had book lungs like modern terrestrial species. Remains of the only known species of Brontoscorpio were discovered in the St. Mons Formation, in Worcestershire. The species was described on the basis of an incomplete single free finger of a right pedipalp, almost 10 cm long. The complete animal is estimated to have been 90 cm long, making Brontoscorpio one of the largest known scorpions. The species is characterized by the presence of single condyle and row of thick tubercles on the pedipalp free finger. The remains were found in terrestrial sediments, showing evidence of Brontoscorpio being terrestrial. It may have gone ashore to escape predation, but due to its size, it would have had difficulty supporting its weight on land and likely lived a primarily aquatic life. Pulmonoscorpius was one of the largest scorpions to have ever lived, with the largest known individual having an estimated length exceeding 70 cm it retains several general arthropod features which are absent in modern scorpions, such as large lateral eyes and a lack of adaptations for a burrowing lifestyle. It was likely an active diurnal predator, and the presence of book lungs indicate that it was fully terrestrial. While placement in the genus Centroids implies this species is a semi-arboreal one, the striped bark scorpion spends a substantial amount of its time on the ground, and can be found under rock and surface debris, within vegetation, and in weathered rural structures such as old sheds and barns during the day. The terrestrial preferences of this species carry into the night hours, 
when the scorpion emerges from its temporal shelter at or after sunset to forage for potential prey. Giant Desert Hairy Scorpion is a burrowing scorpion, but is commonly found under rocks containing moisture. Its diet consists of large insects, spiders, and small vertebrates. Its competitors include the giant desert centipede which is also a natural predator to the scorpion. Like all scorpions, it gives birth to live young, which remain on the mother's back for a week or more before leaving. Although this scorpion is big, its venom is not very potent, and its sting is commonly perceived to be about as painful as a honeybee's sting. However, an allergic reaction to its venom is uncommon. Symptoms can include difficulty breathing, excessive swelling, and prolonged pain. Vietnam forest scorpions are a communal species, but cannibalism has been known to occur, and if caught, they can be extremely violent even towards their own kind. Scorpions use their pincers to restrain and kill prey, or to prevent their own predation. The venomous sting is used for offense and defense. All known species give live birth and the female cares for the young as their exoskeletons harden, transporting them on her back. The exoskeleton contains fluorescent chemicals and glows under ultraviolet light. Transvalicus thick-tailed scorpion has thin pincers but thick tail. It is nocturnal, resting in a shallow burrow under rocks during the day. When threatened, a scorpion raises its claws and tail in a defensive posture. Some species stridulate to warn off predators by rubbing certain hairs, the stinger, or the claws. Certain species have a preference for using either the claws or stinger as defense, depending on the size of the appendages.